Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. I just got this idea that I would open up my camera and just start talking and start rambling. Today hasn't been what I would call an incredibly productive day. Well, I want to say primarily it's because I don't have my uh, I don't have my editing software anymore, and that's well, that is it is true. Um, quick backstory on that: I was I actually finally decided on the editing software I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with um, Vegas Movie Studio 13 Platinum. 14, from what I've read, is supposed to come out in February of next year, February 2017. So I was like, yeah, you know, 13's lasted this long. It's probably going to be just fine. And besides that, my free trial's about up, and I was really satisfied with the product. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go with this. I don't like the way Adobe... Since they're pretty much number one on the market, they charge you every single month. I forget if I've voiced that in any video before, well, I've voiced it now. And I'm not pleased with the way they charge you a monthly membership just because that's what they can do. I think there's a software program you can buy that's one shot? I think there is. I think that exists. But um, the, one, the prices that I looked at were just outlandishly expensive. Nothing quick or affordable or simple. And usually they came in a bunch of bundles. I have all the information on my computer. Anyway, since I'm not some huge YouTuber, I don't have the best camera, and my computer's decent, but not the very best computer, I was like, let me just get a decent little software. So I didn't get paid to do this. I'm doing, in fact, that's not even the purpose of this video, as you saw from the title. But I just wanted to tell you guys why there's not really a video gaming video coming out today, because I couldn't edit anything. I, there's probably something stored away in the recesses of the YouTube folder that I have, but instead I just wanted to, since I had the opportunity, the opportunity of having a <laughs> no editing software, <laughs> I could probably go back to the free one that I was using for a little while. I'd rather not. I might. We'll, we'll see how the next few days go. I'll probably end up using the free one at some point, but I just took today to watch an anime. To watch an entire, an entire series of an anime. Obviously, it couldn't be incredibly long if I watched it in one day. And it was something that um, I heard recommended by Misty Cronexia and Lost Pause. I would definitely say go check out those two channels. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description below for those two guys. Since I don't even know how YouTube annotations work, and even if I, I wonder if that includes, I, I wonder if that includes text as well as the box that you can click on. I don't know. I haven't looked into it. I've been on YouTube since April of this year, and I have no idea. <laughs> oh my gosh! I want to say if you want to start a YouTube channel, please look into a few more things than I did when I started. At the same time, I'm glad I started. I'm glad I started when I did. I'm glad I started at the time that I did. I'm glad for all the things that I've done, and all the mistakes that I've made, and all the things that just kind of didn't fit into place, and all the things that did, which is a perfect lead-in to the anime that I watched, Plastic Memories. For some of you watching this, that title may, uh, that just hearing that may uh, bring an immediate sucker punch to the feels. I would certainly understand why. Some of you may feel just a, that, that little bit of a sad feeling from having watched a sad anime. Or maybe a happy feeling because even though there, was so, there were so many um, sad moments, it really did have a, a pretty, pretty thorough, happy ending. Like everything was resolved, everything was put together, fell in place where it needed to, and just made for a really nice story. And... So yeah, essentially, plastic without I was like I've never done a review of an anime before, so this is kind of weird. But again, no editing software, and all, and I just got the idea. I was like, you know, instead of me just kind of whenever I watch something I like, I tend to take thirty minutes to an hour, and I just kind of pace around my dwelling place, um, be it a home, be it a room. Right now, where I live, it's my room. Don't really have the freedom to walk around the entire house with other tenants here. And I was just like, and I just think about it. I just think about what I've watched. I just think about what I just witnessed. Um, especially if there's something worthwhile to think about. If it made me feel, if it made me think, if it brought thoughts to my mind. And I'll just reflect on that and just kind of bask in the afterglow of the glory of what I just watched. And Plastic Memories, I won't, it wasn't the best. Like, um, blah, and my, my, I'm like, 
Nakige, there we go. I'm like, what's the Japanese term? Nakige. Something that makes you cry is essentially what that stands for. Not the very best one I've ever seen. Still very decent. Still a solid story. Probably the, the only anime I've seen up to this point where the romance was the entire point of the anime. Which is a bit unusual when I heard at the very... And this is all in episode one. If it's in episode one, I don't really consider it spoiler-ish. You have this guy, Tsukasa, and he... He, he gets sick. Uh, he had appendicitis on the day of his entrance exams to college, so he couldn't take them, so that meant no college for him. So I don't know how Japan works, and I don't know how real this episode is to life, but essentially, he, he was out for that entire semester. He could not even go to college then. So what he did is he immediately... He knew someone called Godot, who was upper management in a company called Sai. What these guys do is they make androids like super realistic ones they're essentially human but they're machines you would never know they were machines unless like you looked on the inside and saw that instead of veins there was circuitry and even that it's interesting the show didn't even bother to really get rid of that illusion except for in one spot there was a potential you kind of saw what was going on on the inside but not really and that would be very spoiler so i'm not going to give that away Essentially, you kind of could have seen what was on the inside of one, but you didn't. And that's an episode it's three, four, or five, one of those. And I won't tell you, give you a little bait to maybe look onto it there. And I have no idea how long I'm going to talk about this. I've never done a review before, and right now I'm more or less using my, my afterglow gushing time and my thought process time. That's what this is right here. And that's even going to flow into my daily, um, my daily sermon for the day because as a Christian I pretty much see Jesus wherever I go I'm at that stage in my faith where I can pretty much relate the Word of God or Jesus to anything so that's gonna occupy the message of today maybe this will inspire you to look at my message for today that'd be great if it did and you know of course if you don't want to you certainly don't have to so anyway Sukasa he goes to this training office, and the purpose of this training office, this company who makes all these androids, the androids last for 80 some odd hours and amounts to like 9 years and some change. And so at that time, they have to collect the android from whoever they sold it to, because at that point, the, the android would essentially just start breaking down. It may even go rogue, may even become dangerous to the owner or to society in general. And so that you've got to retrieve the android at that point. So they are so he's working in this office and they go out in teams, one human and one is like oh and the term just es escapes me what what they were exactly called. What it, it uh, it's an android. Giftia, I believe. Pretty sure Giftia, Cynthia. I think it's Giftia. Uh, to, is it sad that I don't know that right after watching it? Probably. So I'm going to move along past that. It's a human and a giftia. And they're paired up, and they go to retrieve the android, or the giftia. So he's paired up with this um, little girl called Isla. And she's very awkward. She's very clumsy. She's kind of, she kind of withholds her thoughts, her speech her emotions, she holds a lot of stuff in. And so they're paired up for this retrieval. And so the first episode immediately goes for like, um, just a, it was two particular people that they were retrieving. One was apparently um, a pair of lovers. And just thinking about the, an the whole premise of the anime, you have androids that last for nine years, they're sold to someone, and then they're retrieved at those nine years periods. I'm like, since these, and these androids are hyper, realistic. They're essentially humans, but they're made of silicone and not flesh. They essentially have souls. You would never, ever be able to tell that they weren't a human unless you literally looked inside them, as I said earlier. So you look at them, they're humans. Even the Giftia that he pairs up with, Isla, she's this awkward, clumsy girl. He would, he would never have known not by touch, not by her weight, not by her reactions. He wouldn't know by anything that she was anything other than a human. 
So the first pair they go out to retrieve is a pair. Uh, they I, they don't show on camera them retrieving this these guys or this one person. It's really not clear who it was. It was just a male and a female, and apparently they were lovers and they were trying to get away so they couldn't be retrieved. And when you think about it, that's kind of a thing that they would do. Humans attach to things, right? Like we love our family, we love our friends. We love some of our coworkers, some of our schoolmates, maybe not even all of our family, anyway. But we, we do find people that we like. We find pets that we like, and we attach. We get very close to these beings. We love them, and we want to be close to them. We, we really don't want to leave them. And so with a nine-year limit, I was just like, okay, this anime could so easily go in the direction of, okay, their job is to retrieve these androids. Like, they're, this could easily last way past the 13 episodes that it is and just, put, you know, each episode a different scenario. Like, you know, it could be a husband replacing his dead wife, a mother re replacing a child lost in a car accident. It could be someone looking for a lover. It could be a criminal organization who needs a spare assassin or even um, someone that could easily be, you know, just like someone that if they're, if they're shot, if they're killed, who cares? Just a, a disposable person. So, you know, there are so many positive, so many sad, and so many dark routes that this could take. I'm like, wow, this could take so many different twists, shapes, and turns, and instead... It focuses on the relationship between Tsukasa and Isla. The entire thing. All 13 episodes focuses on that relationship. And it was incredibly well done. It was super well done. Obviously, uh, uh, if I want to keep this spoiler free, I can always change the title and say spoilers in the second half, not the first half. I can do whatever I want. It's my video. The whole thing was handled pretty well, pretty well overall. I was so surprised that they decided to stick with just those two characters when there are so many, like, just off the top of my head, I could easily come up with 13 of my own episodes, just each episode focusing on some different scenario, some different android that had to be retrieved, something that went horribly wrong. You could turn it into an action series, a relationship series. You could do just a purely episodic series where each one was, like I said earlier, something different. The show surprised me when it focused entirely on Tsukasa and Isla. That was the focus of the entire series. I don't think that's incredibly spoilery, if you watch it, you would have found out for yourself anyway. So, hopefully that's not incredibly spoiler. I don't think it is. I won't tell you exactly how it pans out or what happens. But just, you can see where some, a premise like this, their job is to retrieve androids. You're just begging for punch after punch after punch in the fields. Just you know, low blow again and again and again. And the first episode ends with a grandma saying goodbye to a, a granddaughter. That's where the whole thing, and that's the first episode. And I didn't actually, I can I can tear up at certain things. I can cry at certain things. I read any of uh, Jun Maeda's work, the guy who is the mastermind behind Clannad, Angel Beats, Canon. And he, he had a part to play in Little Busters. He did the um, refrain for Little Busters. He had his hand there. And so I, the man is a master of being able to make you cry over the course of a story. And so I've cried unashamedly on all of those, on all of those things that I just mentioned. All of Key's works, I love them to pieces. Didn't actually cry on this one. I almost felt like it came off so aggressive from the beginning, like, we're going to make you cry. It was almost like a resistance to me, like, no, I'm, I'm not going to cry. No, you're not going to get me. It's not going to happen. It was still well done. I still really enjoyed it. I was just kind of like, excuse me. Doggone it. It's getting, a little, it's getting a little late. But I was still surprised at how quickly they just went straight for the sucker punch. I've never seen an anime so aggressively just like, okay, here's what we're about. Here's what you're in for. Let's do this. And usually a story is built up over time. And that's really, interestingly enough, since they didn't focus on an episodic series, since they focused on 
the relationship between Tsukasa and Isla, that is kind of what it ended up being. So the last two episodes ended up hitting really hard, which was good. So not every episode is sad. It actually does have a conclusion that's sad, which is really, really interesting. I won't tell you how that goes. But it's really interesting how they chose to do that. Overall, I'd say it was very well done. Good story. Not the very best in the world, but it'll it'll definitely, uh, as long as you like romantic stuff, it's very heavy into romance. They could have gone in so many directions. We're going to say that over and over again because you haven't heard it enough. They could have gone in so many directions. There was even one action episode where someone from the black market tries to like steal an AI by pretending to be someone on the retrieval team. And so everyone assembles in like an action type unit. There's actually a military branch to this office to take care of rogue androids who aren't retrieved in time or who just get away or who become wanderers. It's a term you'll learn a few episodes in. And they actually have to take these things out if need be. So there's even an, ap an action episode in this. And they didn't take either route. It is the most purely romantic anime I've ever seen in my life. And I guess I haven't seen a ton of animes because I know it's not the only one. But usually you'll have a romance in the middle of all this action or this plot to save the world or this, this military action setting. Or maybe there's just a whole lot of comedy or maybe some miraculous otherworldly stuff going on. A lot of Jun Maeda's and Key's works focus on the supernatural and the otherworldly. And there's a ton of comedy before all the serious stuff hits. So even if you could say a romance is the primary thought or the primary goal behind these series, there's a lot more to it than just the relationship. There's a lot more stuff going on, in my opinion, than just the relationships. Whereas in Plastic Memories, it was about one relationship. Just one. Everything that happened pointed back to that relationship. It was the sole focus. It wasn't part of a bigger picture. It was the sole focus. So if you don't like just romantic stuff, I guess I'd have to say stay away from it. Uh, you may not enjoy it that much. And if you like things that end up, you know, sappy or sad or just it's all mushy and gushy, again, stay away from it. it. It wouldn't be your cup of tea. I honestly like those kind of animes. I'm a fan of slice of life. I'm a fan of comedy and I'm a fan of romance, maybe even a little bit of romantic comedy. Not so much into the Western movies very much, like the American made movies, the cheesy romantic comedies. I'm not honestly a huge fan of them. I just don't like them that much. Although I don't watch a ton of American and Western movies to begin with, to be completely honest. But as far as anime goes, I am totally down with it. Totally okay with that. I, don't, I want to yawn so much right now. Jeez, I didn't think I was that tired. So, it's if you like those kind of things, if you're a fan, especially of Naki Gays, things that will make you cry, even though I didn't cry, I, uh, I came... I came close to shedding a tear on a few occasions. It was still well constructed. It was still well done. I still had a very good time and a very good ride. So I would give, I would still give this thing two thumbs up. If I was doing on a on a star scale, like how many stars out of ten, I think I would give this one seven. I'm gonna go with seven stars. It's not a masterpiece. But it was still very well done. I definitely don't consider this a wasted Saturday. It was very enjoyable. It was a good way to use my time. And apparently I need to go to bed shortly after I make these videos, doggone it. <laughs> yeah, I was saying if I had an editor, I could edit all the times when I wanted to yawn or whatever. But I don't do that. I'm giving you got one guy. I don't have much of an editor or anything at the moment. So I've got to just shoot it and film it straight as it is. And this is... That w this is, that was, because this is the end of the video, me gushing over plastic memories and getting my thoughts out. The sermon is going to be very spoilery because it, there's really, there's no way for me to get my thoughts fully out 
about this unless I go into the spoilers, unless I go into like what happens near the end. So if you want to watch the sermon thing, spoiler alert, I will be discussing the ending of this show. And I'll try to remember, I better remember, because I hate spoilers myself, I better remember to put a spoiler alert at the beginning of that sermon. Otherwise, it's not going to be, everyone's going to be pissed off at me for giving away and granted, it may be a bit of an old anime, but nonetheless, giving away the ending of an anime that people may or may not have seen. So please, if you have the time, it's only 13 episodes. It's a quick watch. It's a fun watch. It is a feelsy watch. And it can definitely make you think of things. It made me think of so many stories that I could just do in that universe. There are so many story potentials that I could do from the universe that this uh, creator, whoever he or she is, gave me. So, yeah, from the, from the thought-provoking standpoint, from the feel standpoint, from the, man, I could create some stories from that standpoint, it's good stuff. A solid 7 out of 10 and 2 thumbs up. If you want to watch the sermon after this, by all means do so. And if you don't want to, that's totally fine as well. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that like button. And if you disliked it, hit that dislike button. Let me know how you feel. And if you really liked it, Share with a friend, maybe even subscribe, and join the freaks! I love you, and God bless.